Hey guys, welcome to Battle of Two Test Benches. On the left side, we've got an established player from the US. This comes from High Speed PC. It is the top deck tech station. And on the right hand side, we've got a contender from China. This is the QDIY PC D008. So, throughout the video, I'm going to call this one the top deck. And this one is the D008. I've been using the top deck for quite a while. You've seen it in a few of my videos. I bought it directly from the US, from the manufacturer. And the D008, I purchased this a couple of weeks ago from AliExpress and it arrived this week. Let's start this video by talking about prices. The top deck, you're looking at $90 for the ATX version and $140 for the eATX version. There's a larger version available. And the D008, you're looking at $57 for the ATX version and $68 for the eATX version. There are also shipping costs. We're looking at $13 for delivery to the US for the top deck and $32 delivery for the D008. For me in Australia, unfortunately the top deck has really expensive shipping costs to Australia. You're looking at $80 and I actually ended up using a mail forwarder to save around $20 and $30. The D008 cost me $32 just like uh, someone from the US, so it worked out a little bit cheaper to go with the D008. The top deck is a very established player. It's been around for many years and you can easily just get uh, spare parts, for example, if you need some more of these legs. You can also customize it a little bit. It's available in different colors. And I actually uh, requested sh uh, slightly shorter legs for this test bench. The D008, on the other hand, is a new product. So we're not gonna know how long it's gonna be around. But just looking at the two, you can kind of tell that the DW8 has a slightly more modern design and it's also got a few more modern features, uh, whereas the tech station is more like a conservative uh, test bench. And later on you will find out that this one is more geared towards uh, speed, towards setting up something fast, whereas the DW8 uh, does a slightly better job at, at a more permanent build uh, with uh, securing the motherboard down and uh, some cable management options as well. Looking at the dimensions, the DW8 is a little bit longer. It is also quite a bit wider. The D008 is also a little bit shorter, and this is with the shorter legs. So if you're buying the stock top deck, you will actually have a, a much taller version than the one I have. So what we're gonna do next is actually put together a quick system, and that way you can see what it's like to work with these test benches, and I will point out the differences. Before we put anything on here, the first thing that I really like about the top deck is the material. It is um, like a rough uh, matte finish, so it doesn't attract too many fingerprints, and although I've been using this for quite a bit, it's not scratched up or banged up at all. It still looks very nice, so they have designed it with, uh, basically with using in mind, and uh, you're not gonna scratch it up that easily. So the D008 is made up of some sort of acrylic material. It is uh, a little bit matte on this side, but on the other side, it's very glossy. And some of the other parts are also uh, very glossy. So fingerprint magnets and uh, dust and stuff catches a lot easier. And very likely you're gonna scratch up um, this material a lot faster than with the top deck. So to install the motherboard on the top deck, you can see that there are no standoffs. We just have two standoffs here with some uh, plastic uh, screws basically, but they don't screw in, they just hold the motherboard in place. And all you have to do is line up these two with the motherboard holes and then put it down. So everything here is uh, built for speed but it's a little bit wobbly, you can't uh, screw it down, but it, once you mount a few cards, it is quite stable. So this is a very uh, quick process of putting the motherboard onto the test bench. So installing the motherboard on the D008 is quite different. It has proper standoffs, just like in a computer case. So you basically just line up your motherboard. You would have to double check um, that you don't have too many standoffs uh, installed and so on. And then you just put in the screws just like you would do in a normal computer case. So the main difference is that this uh, is more permanent, more secure, but it's also going to take you a lot longer to get up and running initially. Okay, next up we're going to install some cards and it's got this plastic support 
beam here and this is basically my only flow I have with the top deck uh, station and I will show you in a moment what the issue is. So let's put in a video card. So we've got an HEP uh, graphics card. There you go. And let's put a sound card on the other end. Like that. And then we're just going to secure it. So it comes with these um, plastic screws. And the reason I point out that these are plastic screws is if you drop one while the machine is running, well, it's not going to short anything out. So that's very uh, handy. And we're also going to screw this one down. So let's have a closer look at this. So you can see that the cards are a little bit tilted to the left side. And the other thing I noticed is that the uh, beam has a bit of a sag. It's uh, lower in the center and it's high up on the sides. And I had uh, instances where the, the outermost card got kind of pulled out of the PCR slot because this was too tall. So that was a bit of an issue, but it does depend a little bit on the motherboard and how firm the PCI slots hold onto the card. But that would, would be my only main gripe with the top deck, to be honest. So the D008 uses these rods or pins. So you can tell that these are metal screws. So if you uh, got the machine up and powered, you might actually drop one of these in here. So that's definitely a concern. So it just means you have to be more careful and actually shut down the computer. There was initially an issue with these rods. Let me just get this one out. And that is that the screws here, so it uses a screw from below. It was a little bit long. So I had to put in a washer. What I mean with uh, what I mean with too long, it goes in like that, and yeah, it's just too long. So you might have to put one or two uh, washers here to make this screw basically a little bit shorter. But otherwise, um, this works quite well, to be honest. Let's install some cards. I'm gonna do the same thing as with the other bench. We've got a sound card over here, so you just drop it in and we're going to put this screw back on to secure our sound card. There you go. And for the graphics card, it's actually the second and the third rod. And the first one is actually not used. So let's drop that in here. Just going to wind this one up. There you go. So here we have the cards from another angle and the cards seem to be nice and straight. So the only thing to watch out for are the metal screws. Don't drop them into your computer uh, while it's running, but otherwise this works pretty well. So let's have a look at adding an optical drive and some hard drives. The optical drive will just sit below here. It comes with this um, rubber mat that you really need to put here because otherwise the drive will just slide around. And then I'll just place the uh, optical drive over here. You can put it on either side, but I found it easier to put it on this side because then it lines up nicely with the IDE ribbon cables. But you might find it easier putting the, optic, uh, putting the power supply over here with the cable managed for the ATX um, cables. Now, one thing with the hard drive, I like to just put them here as well, like that. But included in the box is a uh, rail system where you can mount the hard drive underneath here. But I didn't want to use that. I like uh, just to place it like that. So we're just going to add the ribbon cables. We're going to use one for the optical drive and then we connect it up here like that. And we're going to add a second one for the hard drive. Plug it in like that. And that one uses the other port. So we're just going to flip it around a little bit and connected, and here we go. So there's no cable management on the top deck, um, but it's very fast, quick um, to get up and running. So the way you install optical drives and hard drives with the 008 is slightly different. So it comes with this uh, bracket here and you basically mount your drives to that. You can also mount the hard drive in here and it's got some uh, special uh, standoffs and screws for that, but I'm not using that. I'm only going to mount the optical drive and then I'm just going to place the hard drive on top. And it's got some little feet in here and basically you just put it in there like that and it'll snap in like that. You can also put it on the other side. Well, I've got this in the way. Give me a sec. Let me just quickly unravel the front panel buttons. So you have a choice once again. 
where you want the drive, to the left or to the right, but that also affects um, where you can put the power supply. You can also turn this around by 180 degrees. Uh, it just means that it's easier for you to access uh, the power and the RDE ports at the back, but then looking from the other side, it just means it's a little bit deeper. But you have a choice here, so it's quite flexible in that regard. So I'm just gonna quickly install all that. I'm gonna put in a ripple ribbon cable for the hard drive and also one here for the optical drive. And we're just gonna install it and see how that looks. So that one goes in there first. Off we go. And now we can use these uh, cable management gaps, which is pretty awesome. So that one goes uh, in this one. And then we do the hard drive. Put it in here, route it through there, and plug it in. So this is quite a bit neater uh, because of those uh, cable management gaps. And next up we've got the power supply. And I usually put it in like that so that the uh, power cable actually comes from the front, but you've got easy access to the power switch. And I'm just gonna uh, connect all the power cables, do a bit of cable management just with some cable ties and then I'll show you what it looks like. So here's the finished build. So I used the zip tie to just bunch these cables together. We've got two Molex connectors for the optical drive and the hard drive. The ATX power cable goes here and the auxiliary CPU connector goes over there. So uh, on the back it looks a little bit uh, messy but not too bad, whereas uh, this side is nice and clean. And likely this is how you're gonna use your bench. You can just plug in the power here, switch on the machine, and uh, off you go. Let's look at installing the power supply. And once again, it comes with a bracket, which has little uh, feet that will go into this, these gaps here. So once again, it takes a little bit more time to set up. So it definitely has a more permanent and more uh, secure build in mind. So we just gotta put that through here. So all the cables. And then it just snaps in here with these little feet. There you go. So this is what that looks like. So let's have a look at the finished uh, test bench build. Everything is a lot neater. You can tuck things away and you can use those cable management holes here, for example, for the auxiliary power connector, for the IDE cables here, for the ATX connector. And if you're using a more modern motherboard, you can put SATA cables through here. The drives are on the other side compared to the top deck and it was more work, just a little bit fiddly. The uh, distance here, it's not as, uh, the gap is not as large, so you have to fiddle around a little bit more. But once it's done, um, it is more neater, more secure, and more, and more permanent, basically. So the trend continues that uh, the uh, 008 test bench is more for a permanent setup. So to turn on the machine and do the reset and have a LED for power and the hard drive, it comes with a little uh, bag like that and you get little connectors that you can just uh, stick uh, onto the front panel headers like that. Optionally, you can also purchase one of these contraptions, which is basically a rear bracket, which goes in the back here and has the same functionality, power, reset, uh, power LED, and also hard drive LED. What I really like is that the front panel buttons are integrated into the unit itself. So we have two buttons here, one for power reset, uh, LEDs for power and the hard drive. And here are the uh, connectors. And basically uh, what I do, I just wrap it around here, uh, around this post here, just to uh, reduce the slack and then we're good to go. So I really like that uh, touch. It also comes with more front panel stuff. This is for audio and USB, but I'm not going to use that. I usually have enough USBs on the back of the motherboard. So here we have the final two builds side by side. And now I'm going to spend a few moments just to give you uh, my take on the experience of working with both. Both come flat packed. Basically, the package on the uh, 008 was a little bit uh, taller, larger. Um, not that it makes uh, much of a difference. Um, and Putting it together 
look, if you put anything together in your life, I don't know, IKEA, furniture or whatever, you're not going to have too much of an issue, but uh, the top deck is a lot easier. It's got less parts and less fiddly. This one has a ton of parts and even though I'm finished, um, I still have some spare parts left and most of them I don't even know what they're for. So this one takes a longer to put together. So I don't know if you bulk purchasing some of these, I don't know, five and you want to put them together quickly. Um, this will take you longer. Also each of these acrylic panels has a protective uh, sheet on both sides. So Again, it slows you down, so <laughs> um, if you get frustrated easily, like I sometimes do, um, you might find this one a little bit more uh, difficult to put together. So in terms of sturdiness, there's very little flex on the top deck and these test benches are tried and tested by lots of people. This one is still new, it's, it's thinner, we get a bit of flex here, but yeah, you're not gonna stand on it or put weights on it, so I don't think that's an issue. But I can definitely tell you that you're going to scratch this up faster simply because of the acrylic material. And this is nice uh, matte and coarse. So this should stay cleaner and neater for longer. So to summarize these two test benches, this one is well established. Uh, they've been out for many years, easy to find spare parts. It's not as uh, modern looking, it looks a bit dated, but uh, it's uh, tried and tested and it's got a very simple design. It's also very quick to set up, no screws for the motherboard. You just put the drives below and off you go. This one takes a bit longer to set everything up with the screws and these brackets for the power supply and the drives, but it is also more secure and uh, more permanent. So, and that's really how I would approach this. Are you looking for um, a bench where you're going to swap a system several times a day or every day or something like that? Then you might be better off with the top deck. But if you're building something more permanent, um, like a showcase piece or a, a permanent test bench, for example, to test PCI video cards, then um, I really like this one. And I also like the cable management stuff. It's got a few more modern features, uh, which makes the final build look a little bit more modern. So between these two test benches, they're both pretty good to be honest, and it really depends on what you're actually going to do. I will likely use both. For my quick builds, I'm gonna use the top deck because it's just faster. But for my more permanent uh, benchmarking systems, I might switch to this one. So hopefully I covered all the bases, but if you do have any questions or comments, do leave them down below. I'm also very interested in what uh, test bench are you using. Uh, sometimes I just use a motherboard box um, if I have no uh, test bench available or if I'm really strapped for time. Uh, but it, yeah, it looks very ghetto and rough. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think about these two test benches. And that's really it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Hit that notification bell and I shall see you soon with another one. <laughs>